Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is an essay entitled, I Don't See the Connection. A reader has written a very important question, which I would like to share with our whole esoteric teaching community. He says, You said in a recent talk that the Mayavadi impersonal philosophy was the source of all the immorality in the world today. Frankly, I don't see the connection between the philosophy of impersonalism and the immorality of Kali Yuga. The impersonalists I know are good people. They are mostly vegetarians and trying to find God in their own way. Why are you so negative towards their beliefs? I find this contradictory. Well, there are so many angles or facets to this question, I don't know if I'll be able to cover all of them in one talk. But let's start from the philosophical level. If God is impersonal, then who is Krishna? All the Vedic sources and sages accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He declares that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Bhagavad Gita, and so many others, including Arjuna, confirm this. The Vedas declare, Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. Religious principles are directly created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam 6.3.19 In other words, we are supposed to follow God's instructions, Krishna's instructions. Krishna can do no wrong because he is completely pure. Therefore, all his instructions are perfect. We cannot imitate him, but our duty is to follow his perfect instructions as revealed in Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic works. But if Krishna isn't God, and everything is one, then we are all God and can do whatever we like. This is a recipe for chaos in human society. The spiritually inclined Mayavadis may be vegetarians and sincerely trying to find the truth. But what about the criminally inclined person who reasons, well, if everything is one and I'm God, then I can lie, cheat, steal, rape, and kill with impunity. Why not? You see, philosophies, like other things, tend to roll downhill. The effect of the Mayavadi philosophy on the mass of people in Kali Yuga has been catastrophic. They have given up all pretense of accepting higher spiritual direction, and the world has been plunged into chaos due to the resulting moral vacuum. Doshair etai kula ghanam varna shankara kara kahai utsadyante jati dharma kula dharmas chasashvataha All kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated by the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children. Bhagavad Gita 142 The unscrupulous political leaders of Kali Yuga support the Mayavadi philosophy because it provides them with a perfect rationale for their immoral acts of aggression and exploitation against weaker countries and even against their own people. They like the Varna Shankara, the unwanted children of this immoral age, because they are easy to deceive and manipulate. They fill the leadership vacuum caused by the rejection of religious principles with their own materialistic schemes for selfish aggrandizement at the expense of the very people they are supposed to nourish and protect. Thus, the leaders in Kali Yuga are nothing but polished rogues and thieves. And their rationalization for these heinous activities is, guess what, Mayavadi impersonalist philosophy. Krishna describes this demoniac mentality in Bhagavad Gita. The demoniac person thinks, 
So much wealth do I have today, and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now, and it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him, and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. I am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance, thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions. They become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. Bhagavad Gita 16 13 through 16. Does this sound like anyone we know? <clears throat> now, considering the social consequences of Mayavadi philosophy, it seems like a bad idea, even if it is the truth. But is impersonalism really a fact? Is God ultimately personal or impersonal? It is clearly explained in Bhagavad Gita that while impersonal Brahman is an aspect of the absolute truth, it is subordinate to the complete Supreme Person. Brahmano hi pratishtaham amritasya vyavasya cha sasvatasya chadharmasya sukhaya kantikasya cha I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. Bhagavad Gita 14.27 Brahman is more explicitly explained in Vedanta Sutra to be like the rays of the sunshine. The impersonal Brahman is the shining rays of the bodily form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Impersonal Brahman is incomplete realization of the Absolute Whole, and so also is the conception of Paramatma. But Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Supreme Absolute Truth. Yasmaksharamatitoham aksharad apichotamaha atosmi loke vedecha pratita purushottamaha. Because I am transcendental, beyond both the fallible and the infallible, and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that supreme person, Purushottama. Bhagavad Gita 1518. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Purushottama, is above both impersonal Brahman and the partial realization of Paramatma. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Satchid Ananda Vigraha. The Brahma Sanghita begins with this truth. Ishwara Parama Krishna, Satchid Ananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Govinda, Krishna is the cause of all causes. He is the primary cause, and he is the very form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Brahma Samhita 5.1 Impersonal Brahman realization is the realization of his Sat, eternity, feature. Paramatma realization is the realization of Sat, Chit, eternal knowledge. But realization of the personality of Godhead, Krishna, is realization of all the transcendental features, Sat, Chit, and Ananda, eternity, knowledge, and bliss, in complete Vigraha, form. So the impersonalist philosophy is part of the supreme absolute truth. And when a sincere impersonalist hears about Krishna from Vedic evidence, he at once accepts the complete absolute truth. For example, when the four Kumaras, the mental sons of Lord Brahma, met Lord Vishnu, they immediately became devotees. Tasyaravinda nayanasya padaravinda kinjalpa mishra tulasi makaranda vayuhu Sankshobham Akshara Jusam Apichitta Tanvoho. 
even though they were attached to the impersonal Brahman understanding. When the breeze carrying the aroma of Tulsi leaves from the toes of the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead enters the nostrils of those sages, they experienced a change 